This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I'll tell you guys a little bit more about Squarespace later on in the video, but for now, let's get into it. The Star Wars Battlefront franchise is one of, if not the most beloved Star Wars gaming franchises that there is. Spanning the journey from 2004 to 2020, it's been one hell of a journey with many ups and many downs. In this video, I am going to go over the complete history of Battlefront games from the original Star Wars Battlefront in 2004 to right now in 2020 with Battlefront 2 coming to its sudden end. And of course, we'll cover absolutely everything in between regarding the franchise that doesn't really get talked about a great deal like the cancelled Battlefront games and the swept under the rug portable games. So kick back and relax as we dive deep into the complete history of Battlefront games. So let's take it all the way back to 2004 where Pandemic Studios released this little game called Battlefront, a new Star Wars game that brought us a variety of Star Wars content from both the original trilogy and currently releasing at the time, prequel trilogy. Bringing incredible locations for the players to explore and do battle on, like Bespin, Naboo, Endor and Tatooine, as well as more unique planets like Renvar. Battlefront also brought along a campaign that basically took the playlist from instant action and played out in chronological order with cutscenes from the films to just help tie it together and give it a sense of story. On top of that, the now iconic Galactic Conquest game mode was born, allowing players to take the fight across various planets and fans still to this very day want almost nothing more than to see this mode in current Battlefront games. Looking back now, one of the game's major downsides is the fact that there are no playable heroes in the first Battlefront installment. Instead, heroes were nothing more than AI, with absolutely no control over them coming to the player. But at the time, this wasn't a deal breaker, as the franchise was still in its first steps. Overall, Star Wars Battlefront was an incredible entry point for this new franchise. Players universally praised the game, as did critics, and looking back on it now, you can see that the Battlefront franchise has come so far since its very first installment. But it definitely does pay to remember the roots of this franchise. Now, given the success of Battlefront, Pandemic Studios went to work on an immediate sequel. Enter Battlefront 2 2005. Just over a year later, Star Wars Battlefront 2 hit the shelves and we had a new Battlefront game on our hands that kicked it up several notches from its predecessor. Taking everything great about the first game and adding basically everything that the first Battlefront was lacking. Battlefront 2 launched alongside the Revenge of the Sith DVD, so its release lined up with the films and helped build that hype. Battlefront 2 kicked it up a level by adding playable heroes to the game, which was a huge fan request. They added more locations and planets to the roster, some new game mechanics, and a campaign that was a step up from its predecessor. Telling the story from a 501st clone trooper's perspective, leading into the rise of the Empire, with some amazing cutscenes allowing for some clone perspectives of the events of the campaign. As for some of the new maps that the game had, it included planets like Mustafar, Kashyyyk, Felucia, as well as iconic planets like Coruscant with the incredible Jedi Temple map. As well as adding some new game modes like Capture the Flag and Hunt Mode, but most importantly, the addition of playable heroes was perhaps the biggest step forward that this game took. Allowing players to use iconic characters in Star Wars including Darth Maul, Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker and many, many more. With new modes like Hero Assault mode which allowed players to use these new heroes in some all-out Heroes vs Hero carnage. And given what we know about heroes being arguably the most popular aspect of Battlefront games these days, this was a huge step in the right direction for this franchise. But another addition Battlefront 2 had was the inclusion of space battles. Allowing players to spawn in capital ship hangars, jump into a ship and join the carnage that ensued. A pretty awesome experience that I think modern Battlefront games could learn a lot from. Now, due to Battlefront 2's amazing success, it seemed as if a Battlefront 3 would be inevitable and would soar this franchise to all new heights. But things did not play out as people had hoped for. But before we dive into that, I want to take a quick second out of this video to tell you guys a little bit about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace have been an ongoing sponsor on this channel for a while now, so Squarespace is a very easy to use tool for building your own website, so if you're looking to start a business or a brand or launch a passion project, 
then Squarespace can make that process a whole lot easier. Like I've said when I've worked with Squarespace in the past, I've had to build websites and things like that for university assignments countless times, and it's always a really frustrating process. So I know how annoying it can be to build a website or to put together a portfolio from scratch, but Squarespace does make it much easier and much more fluent. Be sure to go to squarespace.com forward slash the Aussie Jedi and use code the Aussie Jedi to save 10% off your next purchase. Be sure to follow the links in the description below and a massive thank you to Squarespace for the ongoing support for the channel. But now back to the video. In October 2007, Star Wars Battlefront Renegade Squadron was released on PlayStation Portable, a handheld release game. Because of this, the game was obviously extremely limited due to the hardware and it not being a console game. Or even really being a sequel to Battlefront 2, just a throwaway spin-off. Renegade Squadron added very minor things, but overall had a lukewarm reception from both players and critics, and people just wanted to know, where was Battlefront 3? Nobody had heard a great deal about Battlefront 3 for a long time and people just wanted to know when or even if this highly anticipated sequel would come to fruition. Now given what we know now, which is still shaded in uncertainty, still to this day, the story goes that a former LucasArts employee went and spilled the beans to a video game website by the name of Kotaku. He claimed a Battlefront 3 was in development and Free Radical were working on the game, but shortly after Free Radical came out and announced that they lost the rights to the already in development Star Wars Battlefront 3 and that the game had been cancelled mid-development. Now the cause of this game's cancellation is still shrouded in mystery to this very day. Some rumours say that Free Radical's developers were constantly missing deadlines and that they just couldn't commit the resources to deliver the scale and content that the game was going for. So LucasArts pulled the plug, and other rumours say that LucasArts couldn't commit to spending a ton of money on the game's marketing, so they pulled the plug with the game not far off completion. So we obviously don't know the truth, and I wouldn't be surprised if there was some middle ground there. But from what we have seen of gameplay that has trickled out over the years, the game did seem to be very ambitious, but very rough still. But it seems the game would have featured Space to Ground as well as a big, big campaign. Now following this, in November of 2009, Star Wars Battlefront Elite Squadron was released. Again, another handheld game, but very average overall. And in 2009, the not-so-good Star Wars Battlefront Mobile Squadrons was released to, you guessed it, mobile phones, and that was a bit of an ignored dud. And for nearly four years, there was absolutely nothing on Battlefront games. Now fast forward to May 2013 when EA received the exclusive rights to Star Wars games for the next 10 years and a month or two after that announcement a small teaser was released regarding a new Battlefront game and it would turn out to be a franchise reboot. Some in-engine footage was shown and it looked incredible and in 2015 we got our first look at the newest Battlefront installment and it blew people away. Then in the following months we got a gameplay trailer and people for the most part were still blown away, but some were still sceptical. The game finally released in November of 2015 shortly before the release of The Force Awakens and the response was mixed. A lot of people were disappointed with the amount of content and there not being a proper campaign. Others were just too blown away by having a AAA Star Wars game with state of the art graphics to fault the game and really care. And there was some backlash for the paid season pass, which went on to deliver the best content that the game ended up having to offer. Around four months after the game's release, the Outer Rim DLC came to Battlefront 2, further expanding the game by adding two new heroes, Nine Numb and Greedo, as well as some new maps and game modes. A few months later, the incredible Bespin DLC was added to the game, which in my opinion really made Battlefront a great game. Then a Death Star DLC followed, and then the game came to its end with its final DLC, which was the Scarif DLC. Scarif was released alongside Rogue One, so it kept up with the tradition of releasing content or games around film releases. Now by this time, Battlefront was a completed game and had come a long way from its launch. And once all the DLC had made its way into the game, it had become a very, very good game by its end. 
Looking back now, the hero gameplay in Battlefront is a little bit janky, but the graphics and fun you could have was just incredible. Then for a little while there, things went a little bit quiet, but not for long. Enter Star Wars Battlefront 2, the battlefront that was meant to be the battlefront of all battlefronts. Combining all three eras of Star Wars with more heroes, more maps, more vehicles and more game modes and free live service post-launch instead of paid DLC like its predecessor. Seeing Darth Maul appear in the game's reveal trailer sent the internet absolutely wild in the best ways and it looked like things were going to be incredible. Then, in November of 2017, Battlefront 2 was launched and was met with immediate controversy. The loot box dramas caused an absolute frenzy and because of it, the game's entire progression system needed to be changed, which set post-launch content back. Despite of that though, Battlefront 2 delivered on the graphics, having all three eras of Star Wars there to enjoy and overall just having a bigger Star Wars gaming experience. The hero gameplay was massively improved, the graphics were jaw-droppingly good, and the Clone Wars nutjobs like myself were able to explore the streets of Theed and the platforms of Kamino. You could also jump into some space battles from all eras of Star Wars, it was a great time. But the hauntings of the game's launch echoed throughout the game's post-launch lifespan for a long time. The Last Jedi DLC dropped alongside the film and was considered to be really good, but after that, things went very quiet as DICE were hard at work revamping the progression system, so there was no new content for some time. People wanted Clone Wars content, but it just didn't happen. Instead, we got a solo DLC to go alongside the film, which sent a lot of people the wrong way. This solo expansion did end up adding some pretty cool skins and a new map, but it's not what people wanted. But perhaps Battlefront 2's biggest turning point was EA Play 2018, the announcement of Geonosis, General Grievous, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Count Dooku, and Anakin Skywalker. This was the moment that things started to change. A few months followed and General Grievous came to the game and a month after that is the update that truly changed Battlefront 2 forever. The balance of the force has been shaken. Obi-Wan Kenobi came to Battlefront 2 and Geonosis came along with him. Within a year, DICE had truly gotten Battlefront 2 back on track to become the game that it was always supposed to be. A few months later, Count Dooku and Anakin Skywalker came to the game and really boosted the hero roster. With these four new heroes, it felt like an entirely new game. Mainly because Anakin was broken beyond belief and almost destroyed the game for a little while there, but the game had really turned around. And throughout 2019, a bunch of updates came to Battlefront 2 and it was slowly built up and the game had really came to life in a big way. And by the time December of 2019 came around, Battlefront 2 had probably its most popular period yet. The Rise of Skywalker expansion came to Battlefront 2 to go alongside the film, which brought Ajahn Kloss, a bunch of hero skins and BB-8 and BB-9E. Pretty controversial, but fun heroes. The player base for Battlefront 2 absolutely skyrocketed and the new celebration edition of the game exceeded sales expectations. Battlefront 2 was booming. And following that, the game got more small updates, but on April 29th of 2020, the Battlefront community got hit with an absolute bombshell. The Scarif update would be the final update for Battlefront 2. A really confusing time for absolutely everybody. Battlefront 2 was booming, it was so popular, its player base was through the roof and the game just came to a sudden end. Truly one of the strangest endings for a game like this, but having said that, the final product of Battlefront 2 was an incredible story. By the time Battlefront 2 had come to its end, it had become arguably the best Battlefront game ever made and it made everybody hungry for a new Battlefront title. And here we are, present day, July of 2020. We seem to now be faced with the mystery of the elusive Battlefront 3 once again. Is it going to come? Nobody knows. 
The original Battlefront 3 was a ghostly figure following the Battlefront games of the mid-2000s, and it seems we are faced with the same ghostly figure right now in 2020 with the new generation of Battlefront games. Will we ever see this Battlefront 3? Who knows, but what I can say is the Battlefront franchise has undergone an incredible journey. And a Star Wars Battlefront 3 could very well end up being the game to cap off an incredible era for an incredible game franchise. So guys, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And let me know your favorite Battlefront game in the comment section below. But that's it for me today, so thank you all for watching and have a good one.